Today I'm going to answer the most frequently asked questions about making soda and the associated techniques of making soda. And I've listed all the questions below, so if you need just uh, one particular answer, you can look at the list below and then just jump to that chapter in the video. And if you already know all the answers, thanks for watching this far, but next week we'll be talking about how to make the best carbonated water that they used to do at the old soda fountain techniques with this new addition to the bench top. So let me get into answering the questions. So the number one question I get is why can't you just add an essence directly to a glass of soda? Whether you're putting that in on top or you're putting it in before you fill the glass with carbonated water? And the answer is emulsification. So if I were to take this essence and just put it on top, you'll just actually see a, a, a oil droplets form on top. So if you want to try it, you can. And you'll just see little tiny balls of oil sitting on top. And what happens is when I take a drink of that, we're basically going to gulp down all the flavor in one shot, and then the rest of the drink is going to be water. Now, even if you add the essence to the bottom of the glass and fill it up with soda water, what's going to happen is that it's still going to float to the top because it's not properly emulsified. And I know the steps to make and essence are kind of, you know, we all like shortcuts and we all like the easiest method, but oil and water do not mix. So it's really important that you get them, you know, emulsified, separate out the things that like the terpenes in this case that will not dissolve in water at all. And, you know, make your essences properly and then put them in syrup. And that's going to make sure when you serve a drink or you have a drink, that it tastes uniform all the way through. Now this is a cinnamon syrup. I think I made this 18 months ago and it's still, you know, emulsified and looking good. It hasn't separated, but we went through all the steps to do it properly. And I've got 18 months on this bottle of cinnamon syrup. So that's the difference. And if you don't do the proper emulsifications, like just taking your essence and putting it in the water, you're going to have a really strong first sip and then a very bland drink afterwards. And it is really about distributing the flavors uniformly through the water or the soda water or whatever drink you're making so that the drink tastes good all the way through. And that's why we just can't add an essence to a glass of soda. Now it will work in cocktails a little bit better because cocktails are mostly alcohol and these oils will dissolve more readily in alcohol. So if you're making an essence, you know, it's much like a bitter where you can actually put it in and it will disperse throughout the drink easier. Soda is the more difficult problem for that. But again, you can do whatever you want. And if you buy things like Mio, they're especially formulated with sometimes artificial flavors so that they are soluble in water. And certain flavor compounds like wintergreen uh, have limited solubility in water, so they will dissolve more readily. But things like orange oil, uh, it's a very difficult one. Any of the citrus oils are very difficult. So some things will work, but most things when you're using essential oils and other flavor compounds that have terpenes in them will not. So and that's why we can't actually just add an essence, some simple syrup and some soda water to make a drink. If that was the case, the whole world of soda would be completely different. So now when you're making essences, one of the things that needs to be noted is that uh, they often need to be aged. So I made this ginger ale extract over a year ago and it's been aging in this bottle. And I am, we are going to try it in the future, but I, I was going to do it in this video, but what I'm going to do is make a fresh batch of this and compare the two. And I'll be able to give you a better answer that way. Because just going off my memory is not going to work. But even Coca-Cola back in the 1910s in the formulas I found for it said to age it for at least 10 days. And what's really happening is, is when you combine essential oils with alcohol and you just shake it up, uh, you're not fully emulsifying everything. But because they're in alcohol solutions, the molecules will slowly come together and will form a uniform mixture or an equilibrium. All the molecules will evenly disperse throughout the essence or the alcohol base. And that is what gives that kind of unique uniform flavor. When you first mix an essence together, 
Though some of the droplet sizes of the oils will only be 20 microns, which is very small to us, but in the world of soda, that's actually fairly large. Uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and most of the patents that make soda nowadays look at sub-micron, so half a micron droplet size is what they're looking for. So modern technology, if you're using high shear mixers, you wouldn't need to do that aging step. But if you're just mixing it with the magnesium carbonate or just adding it to alcohol and shaking to dissolve it, it does require a little bit of time for everything to, you know, even out and balance out in those flavors to kind of mix. So if you make something and you're a little bit disappointed with, about it, uh, let it sit for a week or two and then retest it. Uh, I suspect you'll be much happier. Now I did a video on how to make a preservative for things like low calorie drinks or other things that don't have a high level of sugar that acts as a preservative or a low pH. And the question, the most frequently asked question I get is how long does it last? And that, really all depends on how you make it. But I can give you some examples. In fresh juice, if you were to add this to fresh pressed juice and the juice was done in a very clean environment, you could get up to four weeks at room temperature before you get fermentation and well, mold growth. If it's refrigerated with the preservative, you can get up to 16 weeks. And again, this is always gonna depend on the conditions of the drink. So the more acidic the drink is, the longer the preservative will work because acids actually nat are naturally preservative. You know, things like botulism will not grow in anything below a pH of 4.6, whether you have this in it or not. Uh, sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate, you know, they'll inhibit some things for a period of time, but they do not disinfect, they do not kill. Uh, bacteria and molds, they just inhibit them. Cinnamon syrup has been sitting around for 18 months, maybe even a little bit longer, but because the sugar content in this is, you know, three to two, so three parts sugar, two parts water, uh, it has a very low water activity and that helps keep it preserved. But also the essential oil of cinnamon is kind of a known preservative. It, it does act, that's why cinnamon actually, you know, deters pests or the oil of cinnamon deters pests, and it seems to stabilize the syrup so it lasts a very long time without actually having a preservative in it. But when I make my soda syrups, I do make sure I clean my bottles very well. I always heat my syrups above 72 degrees Celsius for more than 15 seconds. That actually just pasteurizes it. And I always tend to put hot syrup into the bottle so that if I've missed anything, it will kill any bacteria in the bottle and then you know, always keep it sealed. But for the most part, that is basically the syrup that I made in my how to make a cinnamon syrup video and it's still hanging around just fine. But for long-term shelf stability, you're going to have to do your own stability testing and stability testing is simply adding the preservative and letting the syrup sit around for however long and monitoring for any mold growth or fermentation in it or spoilage or stringiness and basically documenting that. That is what laboratories do and you can accelerate that by putting these in a warm environment if you want to accelerate the process of testing the aging. But uh, a professional laboratory, if you're making a commercial product, will actually do you know, plates and they'll look for, you know, spores and grow out anything to see if it actually is infected. So to generalize for you, every single product is going to be different, but this will extend the life. Uh, fresh juices, you know, you'll get four weeks without refrigeration, up to 16 with refrigeration. In syrups, they could go up to a year or longer, depending on what essential oils are in there and how clean you made your process. So if everything's fully disinfected and pasteurized, it's very unlikely that you even need a preservative, but it could be a safety measure for you. There, there's no one answer to answer all the questions, but it will just make your stuff last longer. Now, one of the questions I get is when you're doing percolation, can you use fresh herbs in these? You can, 
But remember, our fresh herbs are mostly water and you know up to 70, 80% water in a lot of herbs. So you're not gonna get consistent results and fresh herbs will really gum this up. Uh, they tend to form a kind of muddy mass that's really hard to get uh, alcohol through. And you're gonna get a much weaker solution because everything's water. The reason you use dried herbs and spices is because there's no water in it, first of all, to dilute out your alcohol. And you're gonna get much stronger extract because you can pack a lot more dried herb in these percolators than you can fresh. And so you have to account for the water, but for the most part, you can if you want but you'll get better results with dried herbs and spices. Now I'm asked almost daily whether I do consulting and for the most part, not really. Unless you have a plan and a budget that you share with me right at the beginning, I'm unlikely to do consulting because these things are very time consuming. Anytime you develop a product, it's iteration. So if you want me to develop a soda formula for you, I gotta make one soda formula, have you taste it. Make another one, and then make another one, and make another one, and make another one. And what happens is I have to send these out for you to taste them, and then you have to give me what you want, and it's a lot of back and forth, and it becomes very expensive. You can actually do it at home. The whole goal of this channel is to give you the information and the ability to do this on your own. Um, I'm not so much into hand-holding, so I don't do a lot of one-hour consulting. You know, it usually has to be a full project. Uh, you can go to my Patreon site. I will answer your questions there, uh, especially if you're on the higher levels. And again, it's not full on consulting, but if you have questions, I will answer them or at least direct you to like a book or a resource that will help you get through whatever problem you're having, if I know the answer. I am not a beverage formulator. I've made cocktails and you know all sorts of these flavors before, but not on a commercial scale. I'm actually, I'm more of a chemist. And so I understand all the math and the chemical nature of these things and, where to find resources, but I don't actually make products that are commercialized. And the other issue is I don't have the equipment to do it. So for modern soda making, it's preferable that you have high shear mixers and even a benchtop version of those cost five, six, $10,000 for a decent one. And you really wanna mimic what they're going to do at your co-packer. And I don't have the ability to do it, doesn't mean I can't make a flavor, but it's you do want a company or a consultant that has that equipment so that when you go from the test phase of making your formulas to actually sending it with your information to a co-packer that they can duplicate what you did in the lab. I don't have those abilities, so again, I'm not I'm not against consulting, but I'm probably not the best consultant and hourly consulting is not something I'm really interested in. It takes up a lot more time. I know even though it is just an hour, I don't have all the answers in my head. I often have to go look things up. So it's a lot of back and forth. And in reality, I'd rather work on more videos so I could show you how to do more things so that you can do it for yourself. That really is the goal of this channel is to kind of empower you to be better. You know, if you're interested in making soda or cocktails or liqueurs or wine or whatever, eventually we'll get to all those things. But the idea is to give you all the techniques effectively for free so that you can develop them on your own. And, you know, I think that's a, a good thing for you, but hand holding is not, you know, in my skill set. So, I'll show you everything. I can direct you to the resources, but uh, it's one of those things that I, I really would rather you guys do it on your own because you are capable of it. I truly believe that, otherwise I wouldn't be doing these videos. Those are the five most frequently asked questions I get. If you have any questions, you can put them below and I'll kind of assemble them into another one of these videos a few months down the road. If you have an urgent question, just pop over to Patreon. Uh, I do most of my question answering there because it helps filter out the important questions because if it's really important, you know, five bucks isn't a big deal to get a question answered. So if you have pressing questions, just hop on over to Patreon. I will get it. Otherwise, I will keep making videos and eventually your questions will get answered uh, through these videos. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.